Published 1700 EDT, the 5th of September the 2017 updated 1700 EDT, the 5th of September 2017 in 2014, I bought two mobile phones for my elderly parents on the Orange Network Naui, each with a £50 top-up. The phones were rarely used but now neither of them works. He says that both numbers were disconnected because my parents hadn't made a call or sent a text for six months. It's refusing to refund their £98 unspent credit. H.J. Triorki, Wales. Bad call one reader's parents hadn't used their mobile phones for six months, so he cut them off and kept their phone credit at first glance, your case looked straightforward. It is standard practice across the mobile industry for providers to deactivate your number if you fail to make a call or send a text for six months, and you lose any credit built up. Often, firms will pay this back if you ask, but issue refunds on a case-by-case -case basis. In your case, only one of the phones you gave to your parents had been used over the past three years. It had £48.15 left on it when it was deactivated, and he says it will refund you this amount. But because the other mobile was never used, it was never activated. That means it never appeared on e-systems, so he has no records on which to fall back. When I suggested to E it could simply refer back to the original sale and refund you the £50, it said this was impossible. You bought the mobile phone through Sainsbury's. When you buy via a third party, the network provider only finds out when you start using the phone. So E says its hands are tied, it has no way of verifying that you bought the credit in the first place. I'm afraid it seems you've fallen victim to the mad way the mobile industry works. I suggest calling this a bit a learning experience, and to remind your parents to make a text a phone call every six months at the very least. Every week, Money Mail receives hundreds of your letters and emails about our stories. Here are some from our article last week about how British authorities have asked the consumer watchdog in Spain to launch an investigation into car hire ripoffs after Money Mail submitted reams of evidence. I always use a local firm on holiday. I've never been hit with fees or experienced any hassle. You need to do your homework, but I definitely recommend it. K.S. Harpenden, Hearts. It's not just abroad that you can get ripped off when you hire a car, it happens in this country, too. They employ the same underhand tactics. WHL's tree, hearts. Take photos of every scuff and scrape. This has often saved me from big charges. Watch out for mileage limits, too. The last car I rented only let me to do 60 kilometers a day, barely enough to get from the airport to my apartment. ML, London. When you are looking for car hire at your destination, check online forums about which ones to avoid. There is a much better chance you won't be ripped off. WY, London. Car hire firms are in a race to get their prices as low as possible, so they appear at the top of comparison sites, but they can make a profit with such prices, which is why they hit you with extra fees later on. SP, London. The UK is just as bad. The same tricks apply, rip-off, damage charges, fees to refill the tank, pushy salespeople peddling their own insurance, if we are to ask Spain to weed out the rogues, first we need to get our own house in order. PM, Manchester. Will the Spanish regulator do anything even if it does, it will take months, even years, before any action is taken. PR, London. I have just returned from a disastrous holiday to Turkey with my fiancé, eight-year-old daughter and his parents. When we boarded the EasyJet flight, I put a folder of passports and visas in the overhead compartment above our seats. But on landing, they disappeared. When I climbed onto the seat opposite to look for them, I fell and injured myself. The cabin crew called for medics, who took me off the plane to see if I needed stitches in my lip. Without the correct documentation, Turkish officials refused a sentry. We felt intimidated, and they bundled us back to Britain on the same plane. The crew were wonderful, and assured us we'd be given free flights and could choose when and where we wanted to go. But since getting back the airline has failed to follow through on this promise. Meanwhile, I've been in and out of hospital with a suspected blood clot in my injured leg. A flight voucher doesn't seem like much to ask for. EM, Staffordshire. How awful. What's frustrating is that there is nobody to pin the blame on. The thief is long gone. The Turkish authorities were within their rights to refuse you entry and it's not EasyJet's fault your passports were stolen. But where EasyJet falls down is in its communication. It says in this situation, it would usually rebook passengers for free on the earliest available flight back out to their destination after they'd replace their travel papers. This would have been a real pain, but you could have at least enjoyed the rest of your holiday. 
However, you had to go to hospital for a suspected blood clot, so clearly couldn't travel. You say you were told by the crew that you would be able to rebook the flights to a destination of your choosing. So it's understandable that you were upset when this DIDNT materialize. The issue is that EasyJet says it only offered seats on the next flight, as it usually would. And, despite your attempts at contacting the firm via social media, the issue was still not resolved nearly two months later. The good news is that EasyJet has changed its mind. A spokeswoman says as a gesture of goodwill, EasyJet will provide a flight voucher to the original value of the family's booking. Do I need to inform an insurer if I get six extra points on my driving license my renewal forms have gone through and, if I tell them I now have nine points, my premium will go up? In the event of an accident, will this affect my claim? PM, London. My source at a price comparison website says renewal documents will ask you to notify the insurer of any changes to your circumstances or inaccuracies in the details listed, and points would count as this. Not all insurers require you to notify them of points immediately during your policy term, but you definitely need to mention them when your renewal comes about. Premiums may go up, but what's the use of a policy that's potentially invalid? I had a call from someone claiming to be from Tesco Club Card, saying it won £50 in vouchers. The caller started asking questions such as whether I am retired or a homeowner. Was I right to hang up? C.S. St. Albans, Hearts. Tesco confirms this was a scam. Report your experience to Action Fraud at actionfraud.police.uk or by calling 0300 123 2040. My friend is at his wit's end struggling with debts. Last year, he missed some council tax payments while looking after his unwell sister, he's not in good health himself, and now, debt collectors are chasing him. Where can he go for help? R.C. Essex. There are a number of debt charities your friend can call for free advice. Try Step Change on 0800 138 1111, the Debt Advice Foundation on 0800 043 4050, a national debt line on 0808 808 4000. I'm a retired basic rate taxpayer, but for each withdrawal from my pension pot, I am taxed at 40%. I have to manually reclaim the other 20%, which takes a month. Is there a quicker way to reclaim? ND, via email. Pension providers are required to apply emergency tax on the first withdrawal. Where the customer does not have a P45, the provider should send all of the details regarding the payout to the taxman, which will then usually issue an updated tax code so future payments are taxed correctly. Contact HMRC to ask why you are being taxed at a higher rate. I earn a small income from my savings on top of my pension. I'm confused about whether I need to pay tax on this during 201,718. There are savings allowances, but I'm unclear how they work. Can you help? LP, via email. It's complicated. First, you don't have to pay any tax on the first £11,500 of your income, thanks to the tax-free personal allowance. Then there are two rules that can also reduce your tax bill on savings income. These are the starting rate for savings and the personal savings allowance. Both vary depending on your total taxable income. The starting rate for savings means that up to £5,000 of savings income will not suffer tax. You'll get the full £5,000 band if your pension income is below or equal to £11,500. Above this level, every £1 you earn from your pension reduces the savings band by £1, so, if you earn £15,000 a year from your pension, the tax-free savings band will be £1,500. As a basic rate payer, you'll be entitled to a further £1,000 of tax-free savings income under the personal savings allowance. Therefore, for 201,718, you could receive up to 11,500 pounds pension income plus a further 5,000 pounds savings income in the starting rate band that would not be taxed, plus a further 1,000 pounds under the personal savings allowance. And, of course, you don't have to pay tax on interest from savings held in ICES.